Hey everyone, Harris here. And a lot of people are catching on to just how useful iPads and tablets can be for students and educational purposes. There's a lot they can do. And I've made videos covering every new iPad that's come out for the past few years, specifically from a student's perspective. And you can check out all of those reviews if you wanna know about any of the individual tablets. But I've never compared all of the tablets in one video. So today we're gonna to compare the $329 iPad 8 versus the $599 iPad Air versus the 799 iPad Pro 2020. Of course, all of these tablets will have replacements this year in 2021, and I'll make an updated video when those happen. But for the time being, these are your options if you're a student looking to digitize your college experience since it's already completely online, most likely. And this video is presented by Nebo, a great and simple note-taking application to streamline your notes. So we're gonna divide this video into two parts, the aspects of these three tablets that are the same or similar between all of them that you can get regardless of the price point, and then what separates them and what divides them and what is distinct between the different price points. So let's go ahead and get started with what's similar because there are actually a lot. So for starters, they all have Apple Pencil support, mouse, trackpad, and keyboard support, Logitech combo case support, document scanning support. They all support AirPods, long battery life, the full app store, iMessage and FaceTime and all of iOS 14, improved multitasking, a really good Safari, a great files app, and access to HDMI, SD, and USB adapters if needed. So starting out with number one, we have Apple Pencil support. And this is both first party Apple Pencil support and third party, meaning that you can use Apple's own pencil, whether it be the Apple Pencil second generation that we have here or the Apple Pencil first generation. But you can also use third party styli, such as a couple I have here. And I compared six different options in a video, which you can check out with the link in the description or by clicking the card. And these are much cheaper options and they still work almost as well as Apple's own stylus if you just want to do things such as taking notes, drawing, annotating, things like that. So you see that this works just fine. Now, if you have the iPad Air 4 like I have here or the iPad Pro, you're going to be able to use the Apple Pencil second generation. This means that it'll both magnetically attach and charge to your iPad automatically. So this is amazing for storage and just always keeping it charged and also has a double tap feature that allows you to quickly pull up um, a different gesture or a different tool such as the eraser by double tapping and it's fantastic. Or you can get the Apple Pencil first generation if you have the iPad eighth generation and that you have to charge with a cable or by plugging it into the USB port or the lightning port on your iPad and also doesn't have the double tap feature like this one does. So it's not as nice, but it is a little bit cheaper if you're getting the iPad eight, but it's a little bit nicer and a little bit more expensive on the iPad Air and the iPad Pro but you can always go with the cheaper third-party options. Now, secondly, you can use keyboards, trackpad, and mice with any of these iPads. So whether it be a Bluetooth mouse, such as this Logitech Anywhere 3 mouse that I reviewed recently, or the Logitech Pebble, which is a super compact, really light and quiet mouse, or you're using a trackpad built into Apple's Magic Keyboard, although this specific keyboard is not available for the iPad 8. And with the cursor, you're able to navigate your iPad with a mouse and click on things and go in and out and drag and scroll through documents and it works super well. So you basically get a computer-like experience if you use a mouse with your iPad and I'm a big fan of that and you can do that with any of these iPads. Now additionally, Logitech makes their combo case for all of these options. So this is the one for the iPad Air and I did a review of this as well as the one for the iPad Pro as well as the one for the iPad 8. It's essentially a plastic case with an excellent keyboard, a function row, and then a trackpad on the bottom. So you get a laptop-like experience when you're using this case and it works super well. And then Apple also makes their own keyboard for all of these iPads with the fabric texture. It's not amazing, but it's extremely slim and still impressive because of that. Now next is document scanning. So if you have homework or any type of paper and you wanna scan it onto your iPad, you can do it from different applications within the apps themselves or you can do it from Apple's Notes app. So if you have this compose a new note icon in your control center, you can actually just do scan document right there. And then if I wanted to scan this document, I'm able to do that and you can see it captured that automatically. So if I wanted to scan this newspaper, 
I'd be able to do that. I can take a picture and then I can crop it to what I want. And now you can see I have a couple documents here. And then I can click the share button and I can click Nebo. And we'll open this up and I can add it to a collection and import it. And all of a sudden I have that document now and I'm able to annotate it or draw on it or do whatever I need right from there. Next is the App Store. So Apple definitely has the best app store when it comes to tablets. There's so many apps that let you take advantage of the Apple Pencil. Like you can see tons here and just so much more. And as far as I can tell, every app that's available for the iPad Pro is available for the iPad Air and is also available for the iPad 8. So all your favorite video streaming apps, social media, projects, video editing, productivity, and more. So no matter which iPad you get, you're going to get an awesome selection of very high quality apps, including Microsoft Word and Wikipedia and Kahoot and Google Chrome and more. Now one of the top productivity apps and one you should absolutely try out for your Apple Pencil is called Nebo and they are the sponsor of this episode and their newest software update allows you to import and annotate PDFs. So you bring in PDFs from any source that you have, you can send it right into the application or you can import them. So if your teacher sends you a reading for your class assignment or you're editing a paper that you're doing or whatever else the circumstance may be, you're able to highlight, and underline and do whatever you need to do right from the app and you can save it you can share it you can export it and you can even publish it but what's even better than pdf editing is all the other features and smart gestures that this app does so it can instantly go from handwriting to text with a double tap so you can see it, that it just did that and i can instantly edit and move around this text change the size and more and it's awesome. But there's also other really cool gestures. For instance, I can draw a box around this and it'll highlight it, or I can underline it and it will make it bold. And this is the simplest and just best way of transferring written handwriting to text. And then I can modify it however I want. I can scribble text out, or I can split them, or I can join them. There's a lot of things you can do. This is kind of like Apple's new notes app with all its gestures, but so much better. And here's another cool feature. Say I want to do a math problem. I can do math. So for instance, if I need to do a calculus problem, I can do sine of 90 plus, I don't know, cosine of 27, whatever. And then I can double tap it and it'll give me the answer right there. And then I have that problem there. So if you're doing math problems, or I can also quickly pull up a freeform diagram if I need to do a chart or anything like that. This app is really simple and awesome for handwriting notes, but then also converting it to text and then modifying it in a breeze. It is awesome. And you can check it out for free in the App Store, or you can buy specific packages that you want, ranging from $2 and up to $8 for the full package with all the features included. So it's one of the cheaper freemium options out there because you can just pay for exactly the features you want and not the features that you don't want. Next, this one's pretty simple. These all have iOS 14, which is the newest software for the iPads, or I should say iPadOS 14, currently iPadOS 14.3, but they will also all get iOS 15 or iPadOS 15 and iPadOS 16. So they're all on the same software um, bandwidth. So you don't have to worry about um, not being updated to the newest software, depending on which iPad you get. These will all have the latest software for the next couple years, which is awesome, and you get all the newest features. Next is multitasking, and all of these applications allow you to have really great multitasking. So this includes having one app on the left, one app on the right that you can resize to however you want, and then an app that you can pull over from the side. And then you can also pull up a picture in picture from YouTube or kind of any video streaming app that supports it. And you can have a little picture in picture video right here as well. So that's pretty great. And all of these iPads support this multitasking, which is awesome. Next is the new and improved Safari. It's gotten more powerful than ever. It's got lots of tools such as the very old but underrated reader view that you can turn anything into a nice digestible readable view without any ads. Now the desktop support has gotten much better, so you can load desktop web pages right here. And you can also download things right to your iPad and it goes to the files folder. So previously on older devices and older software versions, you couldn't actually download files, but now you can download video and audio and more and it'll go right to the download manager on your iPad, 
which is fantastic. So if you need video or audio for a project you're working on, you can download it right within Safari. And there's a lot more settings and features that this has. So ninth is the Files app and Files is pretty great for not only having online locations. So for instance, I have OneDrive and iCloud Drive, but I can also access things that are on my Mac or my iPhone that share this files application. So I have my desktop on my Mac available on my iPad and more. And then I can also do tags and more. And this is just super handy for navigating different types of documents and videos and files within the files app. And this is super powerful, not perfect, but still really powerful on the iPad. So now the differences. Cameras is a big one. They all have a camera on the back and a camera on the front. However, the iPad Pro has two cameras on the back, one being a wide angle, and the iPad 8th gen has really crappy cameras. The iPad Air has pretty decent cameras, and then the iPad Pro has really good cameras, which is gonna help with things like FaceTime, and if you ever want to use it to record really high quality video, you can do that on the iPad Pro and even get 4K video on the iPad Air, but just pretty mediocre video on the iPad eighth generation. The iPad eighth generation has a slightly smaller screen. It's 10.2 inches, which isn't huge, but the iPad Air has a 10.9 inch screen, whereas the iPad Pro has an 11 inch screen, but they're all very high resolution and the same pixel density. And then the iPad eighth gen does not have a laminated display, which means that there is a slight gap between the actual glass and the display beneath it, which you can notice and gives it a little bit of a hollow effect when you're tapping, you can hear it. And also when you're writing with your pencil, there's just a, a slight gap there. Not a huge deal and you can get used to it, but it's kind of a luxury to have on the iPad Air and the iPad Pro. Additionally, the iPad Pro has a 120 Hertz refresh rate ProMotion display, which is gonna make typing, or sorry, writing with your Apple Pencil buttery smooth, as well as just flicking across your device. It's gonna make it feel faster, which is great, um, but not totally necessary. And if you get the cheaper devices, you'll get used to and comfortable with the 60 Hertz refresh rate on the display. Not a huge deal and not the end of the world. In terms of performance, this one's gonna be pretty big. Actually, the iPad Air is the fastest device here. It has the newest processor. It's really, really fast. The iPad Pro is also blazing fast and the iPad eighth generation is totally usable and fine for almost every task you wanna throw at it. Even some light video editing in iMovie or LumaFusion, but it's not going to be blazing fast nor super snappy like the other two iPads are. So keep that in mind, it's not slow, but it's not fast, whereas the more expensive iPads are fast. And then finally, there is the USB-C versus Lightning difference. And this is really a big difference if you're some type of creator. So for myself, I use USB-C all the time. Not only does it allow me to simply charge my Apple Watch or my Garmin Watch or my iPhone from the USB-C port, but I can also connect a USB-C hub and I can instantly get access to more USB type A ports, USB type C ports, HDMI, SD, micro SD, all of that within a single adapter which you can't really do from the iPad uh, eighth generation. So if you're trying to connect a display and a microphone and headphones and an SD card and more at the same time, you can do that with a USB-C adapter on the iPad Air or the iPad Pro, but not on the iPad eighth gen. I don't think most people are going to be doing this, but it's something that I do as a video creator and somebody who likes to attach microphones and displays and more accessories to my iPad. Now I should probably end with a note about the iPad mini. I've made a review on it a couple years ago, so you can check that out. Apple doesn't really give too much love to the iPad mini and it's okay and super portable and you can use it. It's just not ideal to study after or study on or take notes on. It's just, it's a great device, but it's just a little bit too small to, to I think be a practical device, unless it's just supplementing your Mac. But that's it for this video. Let me know what device is right for you. Any of these three, none of these three, Maybe it's the M1 MacBook Air, which I also just reviewed, and you can check that out. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and make sure to check out Nebo for your iPad, and thanks for watching.